So good afternoon, everyone. Today's final session, um, we're going to make some um, healthy flapjack or granola bars, depending on how you cut them. So they're great for loads of different things. They're great for snacking on in the evening. They're great for giving to the children um, in their little lunch boxes or um, snacks if you're out and about. You can cut them into nice little bars and they hold their shape really nicely. Um, and the other great thing about them is that you can use up loads of different bits in the kitchen. So um, you can change them because, you know, we all get a bit bored with the same thing over and over. So if you, you might want to put seeds in it one week, you might want to put um, some chopped fruit in it the next. You might want to put some poppy seeds in. You might want to put some uh, like flakes of coconut, whatever you've got, it, it kind of works. So um, I'm going to um, kind of talk through the ingredients that we've got. Um, if you haven't got any of them, you can actually leave some out or you can just replace it with something that you do have. So it's really flexible. It should make around 12 bars. Um, if you're cooking along, um, you want to preheat your oven to about 170 degrees fan. Um, and I've got a little tin here, which is like a brownie tin. So mine's just a square one, it's, got, it's quite deep. Um, we like our granola bars a bit deeper, which makes them slightly easier to cut. Um, if you've not got a tin like that, you can line anything that you do have. Um, so we'll go through that in a moment. So um, we're just gonna work down our ingredients list. We're gonna start off with some oats. So I've got my scales down here. I'm gonna tilt my um, screen down so that you can see it. We're looking for 175 grams of oats. Okay. <clears throat> this also works amazingly well with muesli. So if you've got muesli at home, instead of the oats, add your muesli in because you get your little bits of nuts and seeds and things in there, which is, um, which is great. This is also one um, that's really good to get the kids involved in. They love weighing it all out. If it goes slightly wrong and they put a little bit too much in or a little bit not enough in, it doesn't really matter. And they, you know, really achieve something as well. So get the, get the kids involved in that one too. Okay, so I've got my oats in my bowl. I've got a little wooden spoon. Now um, I'm talking about um, adding in some protein powder. So I use this one here, which is PhD. It's um, one that they use at David Lloyd, if anyone's a member. They, um, it's very high in protein. It's low in carbohydrates. So um, it's quite good if you're on a low carb diet. The oats obviously wouldn't be, but the, um, but the protein is. Um, I'm just gonna grab a spoon to add in. We just want 50 grams, five zero grams of protein powder. Mine's a chocolate one, but you know, it can be whatever you've got. Okay. Oh, getting there. Okay, right, so we've got our protein shake and our oats. Just give that a little mix up. Um, and then I'm gonna add in 15 grams of flaxseed. So um, flaxseed is really good for you. Very easy to find. Um, you can get them in Lidl and Aldi and all kinds of places these days. Doesn't have to be a really uber expensive one. Um, it gives you loads and loads of fiber in there. Okay, mix up. Now we're going for some chia seeds. Again, uh, 15 grams of that, or those. They have a habit of flying everywhere, so slow and steady with those. So um, this recipe makes, um, you can make it ve a vegan version very, very easily. So if you've got any little people that are um, lactose intolerant or anybody following a vegan diet, um, this works very well. I'm not going to make it vegan today, um, but that's only because um, I didn't quite have enough um, unsweetened 
almond milk. So um, I'm just going to use normal milk. Okay, so now we've got going for your spices. Now I've got some um, ground um, cinnamon powder here, which is really nice, especially at the Christmas time. You know, if you're making them for Christmas or whatever, they're really lovely. Put cranberries in them and things. Um, I'm not a massive, massive fan of cinnamon. I will put it in because kids love it. Ground mixed spice works really nicely. Um, uh, ginger, star anise, those kind of warming kind of winter spices work really nicely in here. So we want um, a teaspoon and a half. So I'm just going to put a little bit in because I'm not a massive fan of cinnamon. So if you're not a fan of any of those, you can leave them out. Or put something in there that you like. Okay, I'm going to put in a pinch of salt. So I'm going with my my lovely Cornish sea salt flakes. Now these are smoked only because I just love them. So I'm going to put a big pinch of sea salt flakes in there. Okay, we want 75 grams of nut butter. So you can use any nut butter that you wish. You can use normal dairy butter if you wish as well. Um, it, it's completely um, your choice there. So I'm going to use a little bit of peanut butter. See how much I've got. The crunchy peanut butter and the crunchy um, cashew nut butter works really nicely because you get like those little added crunchy bits of nut in there, which is really nice. <clears throat> Just going to scrape that off the spoon. Okay. So I haven't quite got enough of my peanut butter, so I'm going to add a, a little bit of normal butter to make up the difference. Perfect. Okay. Now, obviously, this is going to be quite sticky and stodgy in there because it's like a lump of butter. So um, I'd always recommend in a moment when we've put all our other bits in there, um, popping it in the microwave just for a couple of seconds. It makes it a lot easier to stir um, and incorporate in there. OK, the next thing we're going to put in um, is honey or argave syrup if you are making a vegan version. Um, so we want 100 grams. A bit more in there. Okay. So um, next, we'd like some dried fruit. I like um, sultana, or my children like sultanas in ours. So we want 50 grams of dried fruit or nuts or any, anything that you have. So you can use a fruit and nut mix. You could use cranberries, chopped apricots, dates, um, any, anything that you have really. Just going to put some sultanas in my one. So 50 grams of those or thereabouts. Um, and then um, 70 grams I've put here of um, cacao nibs. So if you're making um, a vegan version, you would use obviously a non-dairy chocolate version. Chocolate, normal chocolate chips um, broken into or normal chocolate broken into little pieces. Okay, so once we've, I'm not actually going to add those in today, um, but, um, but you can. Okay, right, so I'm going to pop that into the microwave um, just for a couple of seconds to kind of nuke the butter to make it easier to stir. Okay, it will also make your honey 
um, slightly uh, runnier, slightly easier to incorporate there. Well, I'm just going to move my scales a moment. So we want to give it a really good stir. Incorporate all of the all of your sugar, whatever you've put in, and all of your butters. If you still need to put it into the microwave again, you can. Um, you know, just to make sure that it's all broken up there. It smells amazing. It smells really nutty, really chocolatey. Something that those kids are just going to love. Or for you at work. Okay, that one's okay. So I've just broken all the big lumps up before we add in our liquid. Okay, so we're going for one, two, five, 125 grams or milliliters. It's the same thing. A gram is a milliliter um, of um, unsweetened because we've got quite a lot of sugar in there already. Um, almond milk. Coconut milk works exceptionally well in this recipe, gives it that little coconutty edge. Um, normal milk um, or dairy milk, um, hazelnut, whatever you like, really. So one, two, five of liquid. Has anyone got any questions? No? Okay, I'm just gonna pour my milk in. I'm just gonna use normal dairy milk um, today. One, two, five. Perfect. Just gonna give that a nice little stir. It actually shouldn't be too wet. The chia seeds in there will actually absorb all of the, um, or quite a lot of the uh, liquid. And it will actually, um, they, they sort of become uh, like the elastic to hold it all together. Okay. So it should be um, like a wet dough, but it shouldn't be like a pool of water in the bottom there. See? like that sort of consistency is what we're going for. I've got some mix, just gonna leave that there for just a second. Um, I've got some mixed seeds here, which I get from Grape Tree. I don't know if you've heard of that shop. It's a, it's a really lovely shop for all your natural ingredients. They're all over the place, which is really easy to find. And you can find loads of seeds and fruit and flax seeds and hemp and all kinds of things. Um, so they're worth, uh, you know, having a look um, around them. But they do omega-3 mixed seeds, which are lovely to top these lovely uh, granola bars with. Okay, you can see by stirring it now, it's starting to thicken up a bit. The oats also will um, start to uh, absorb that liquid. Now I've got a little trick here that I'm going to show you for lining your pan. This works for lining anything. Okay, so we've got our little pan here and we've got our paper. And everyone always says to me, oh, put the stuff in the middle and it all goes all crinkly and then I get lines in it. And then when I try and get it out, I, it breaks. So I've got a great tip. If you scrunch it all up first, and then open it out. It stays where it's put. It's the best tip ever. There, fills all the corners much easier. And it's not um, sliding around all over the place. It's quite good to leave yourself a little lever to be able to get your bars out. Um, what we're going to do when they're cold is, um, sorry, is to, when we get them out of the oven, is to leave them in the tin um, whilst they go cold. Um, sort of about 10 minutes after you've taken them out, you want to get a knife and you'll score them uh, the size that you'd like them. Don't cut all the way through, just score them um, so you, you know, what, you know uh, the size that you'd like then let them go cold and then they should cut really, really cleanly and easily. So we literally 
pop our mixture into the middle of our little pan. Mm. Scrape all that good stuff out of there. And then with a fork, only because it's easier, because your mixture is wet, if you use um, like a spoon and you try and splosh, it's all going to stick to the back of the spoon. Um, so I always recommend using a fork, the back of a fork and just gently um, spread it all out around your tin to the thickness that you'd like. And it shouldn't um, stick to your fork. These are really popular in the um, your cafes that I supply because they're just a little bit different. Sometimes it's nice to have something slightly different than your normal flapjack with syrup and things. Um, okay, so we're just going to spread that out so it's even. We don't want anyone getting any more than anybody else. Then we're just going to lightly, as we go, just press it down so that it becomes like um, no air bubbles in there. Okay, so a nice little tidy tin there. And then I'm literally going to sprinkle a little handful of the seed mixture on, um, mix on the top. It's got like pumpkin seeds and linseeds and um, sunflower seeds in here, which is quite a nice topping to it. And then I always think it looks lovely with a few flaked almonds on the top. So as they brown, they look really, um, they look really nice, really professional. A few of those around there. And then with a clean hand, you're literally going to really gently just press those seeds into the top. You shouldn't um, shouldn't stick too much to your hand, really sort of gently, just to make sure that they're incorporated so that they don't um, fly off um, when you when you cut them later. Okay, so again, you can actually top those with whatever you fancy. Um, and you are going to pop them into an oven for around 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and when, when the edges start to sort of turn golden, nice colour that look a little bit like um, flapjack or granola bars, then, um, then take them out, let them cool, score them. Um, and uh, allow them to cool completely before cutting them um, and then enjoy them. So that is it. They just literally need to be popped in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna pop mine in the oven. Fab. Has anyone got any questions? Anyone think of anything that they might like to, uh, maybe a replacement or anything? No, I use soy milk, but that's okay, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You can you can technically use whatever you, you fancy using. Um, use anything, yeah. Does it have to be dairy? Or, you know, does it have to be a, a milk or could you even use like apple juice or something? You could use, it has to be a liquid. Yeah. Um, you could use apple juice. Um, you could probably use water if, I've never made it with water, but you could probably um, use it with water if you, if you prefer. Um, I, we actually really love it with coconut milk because it gives it that little coconutty flavor, which is quite nice. Obviously not for everybody. Um, but yeah, yeah, just experiment. Try different ones, try some fresh fruit in there. 
haven't tried it with a little mashed banana in it. I think that might be quite nice with a little mashed banana on the top or something. Um, How do you yeah. store them? How do you store them? So once they're cut, I would um, store them in a little airtight tub um, and they would last, um, I'd say, maybe two to three days in a, in a tub. And then they might start to go slightly softer, but they still be OK to eat. Um, don't know that they will last that long. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so. Um, cool. Hopefully. The children will approve, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. Good, brilliant. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. Absolutely. No problem at all.